Hi there, Roy Trilline Biology Bikes. I just had my first taste, and it's good, of my sponge cookies that we talked about earlier, right? Stands for sulfur, phosphorus, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Those are the main elements that make up our body. That's a good cookie. But is it good for me? Let's take a look. So today we're going to talk macromolecules. Macromolecules are nothing more than just food, right? The first one in that um, macromolecule list are called carbohydrates. Take a look at my shirt here. C6, H12, O6. That you do have to memorize. We don't like that word, I know, but this one you do have to memorize. C6, H12, O6. It's the building block for all sugars. Now, when I say carbohydrates... Sugars, uh, we talk about cellulose, uh, it's all the same stuff. We're going to go really, really big molecules to really, really little molecules. And the fact of the matter is, all of it is the building block C6H12O6. We saw it with the carbon cycle, right? Plants were the only ones that could take energy from the sun and produce C6H12O6. I think it's important. Now... Carbohydrates have gotten a bad rap, and the reason for that is because of this glycemic index. What I mean by that is we want our carbohydrates to come in a complex form. We want them tied around a bunch of fiber. Fiber is cellulose. Cellulose is what plant cell walls are made of. Now, I love a good Pop-Tart, but the fact of the matter is that Pop-Tart is made of plants. It's made of sugar. But the problem is, it's been processed. Processed food is not so good for us because it comes in that glucose form and it spikes our sugar levels, type 2 diabetes, right? And we're seeing a lot of that because of the food we're eating. We're eating processed foods. I always say, if you can't tell where it came from, a tree or a plant, then it's probably not that good for you. I've been searching low and high for a Pop-Tart tree. Right, I picture it with a little foil paper and you pull it off and eat your Pop-Tart and then it'd be good for me. It's not, right? And the sponge cookies are not either. My sugar level just shot up. Thanks, Becca. No, I'm teasing. It's delicious and it's a good memory cube too. So we want low glycemic foods, contain cellulose. Oh, don't worry about the fanciness. All you need to know is eat plants. If you can't tell where it came from, it's not good for you, Right? So if you can't tell that it came from a tree or plant, then it's probably not good for you, right? So potato, yeah, potato's got a lot of sugar in it, but it is a plant, right? Take a look at my wife's spaghetti squash here, right? Good for you, right? I could tell that was grown from the ground. She's gonna make, what are we making with this? Spaghetti squash lasagna. Spaghetti squash lasagna, it's good stuff. Okay, so those are carbohydrates. The other thing I need to talk about is this high fructose corn syrup. Now, the reason that's in our food is for one reason only. We grow corn. We grow a lot of corn and we need to do something with it. So what we have come up with is this invention called high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, you see the word corn in it, right? But the fact of the matter is it's not good for us, right? If you're going to cut anything out of your diet, this has got to be cut out of your diet. That's what pops, you know, soda, whatever you want to call it, is made of. High fructose corn syrup is going to bypass, is that how you spell it? Bypasses okay. enzymes in glycolysis. That'll make sense later. You'll sound really smart. But here's the key. Since it bypasses glycolysis, it goes straight to our liver and makes fatty acids. You're going to get a fatty liver, right? We got to get rid of those high fructose corn syrups. All right. We're going to move on to our second macromolecule. How are we doing on time there, Mr. Trevelyan? Four minutes. Oh, nice, nice. And those are fats or lipids. If we can walk over here to our little table, this <clears throat> is lipids, right? A little soggy, but it's been sitting out. But that's butter. It's an animal fat. We're going to call this a saturated fat because it's solid at room temperature, right? Now, what I mean by saturated is it's surrounded completely by hydrogen ions. If you look at an unsaturated fat, I pulled out some uh, avocado oil 
and some um, extra virgin olive oil, which means it hasn't been chemically processed. These are liquid at room temperature, right? So if they come from plants, they're unsaturated, they're liquid at room temperature. If they are animal fats, like this butter came from cow's milk, then it's a saturated fat. Now the same thing, we got an issue <clears throat> with our sponge cookies and most processed cookies, and that's this idea of trans fats. Trans fats are fats that were invented in a laboratory. What they did is they took unsaturated fatty acids, fatty acids without hydrogen surrounding them, and they chemically added the hydrogen there. They called it hydrogenation. And uh, food companies are getting very clever. You know, they know this word is bad, so they don't put that on there. They put hydrogenated fatty acids. Well, it's all the same. And these things are incredibly bad for your heart. They're bad for the circulatory system. If you see that word, you should stay away. It's also legally okay to say, if it's less than a certain percentage, you can say it contains no trans fats, even though it does, all right? Bad, bad stuff, right? And unfortunately for my sponge cookies, which are delicious, I'm gonna eat the rest of these. <clears throat> do what I say, not what I, not what I do. Uh, but the sponge cookies, I didn't see hydrogenated on there, but I assume they do. And of course they do have high fructose corn syrup, right? Delicious. All right, moving on. The last of the macromolecules are proteins. And when we, when we talk about proteins, you'll see my protein dance, and I hope you don't laugh too much because you're going to be doing the protein dance as well. But we're talking about the major ingredient, the building block to make us. Everything about is proteins, right? I lost my hair at an early age, proteins. I'm short and squatty. I got a bad temper. It's all about the proteins, right? Whether it's a structural protein, an enzyme, we'll get to all those later on, but I need you to realize that you are who you are because of protein. And it's the amino acids in our food that puts our proteins together. Now, bear with me. I eat a cow, huh? Cow's protein. I take her or his 20 amino acids and I flip the order around. Like letters to words, I can make different proteins by switching the amino acids around. So if the amino acids are letters and the proteins are words, all I have to do is take the cow's protein, words, switch them in a different order, and I make human proteins. What three-letter molecule do you know that puts our amino acids in the right order? It starts with a D. DNA. DNA. This is Trevline. Early in the morning, got that one right. All right. <clears throat> now, the last two things I'm going to talk about here with proteins are essential amino acids. It does not mean, do not pick this on the test, it does not mean that they're important. Yeah, we know it's important. But when we talk about essential, we'll talk about some essential fatty acids later. We just mean the body can't make it. It's got to come from our food. There's about nine essential amino acids that have to come for our food. And if I'm going to get a complete protein, I need to either eat an animal or you vegetarians. We have to mix our vegetables in the proper combination. Now, here's a blast from the past. See if you get this one right. Legumes, right? Legumes were those potted plants. Soybeans, for example, is a great source of protein as long as we miss, mix a legume with a grain, right? That's a complete protein source. So legumes are missing a couple of essentials. The grain is missing a couple of essentials. We always mix those two together. Oh, I don't know. Most cultures have figured this out. Think about um, typical dish uh, beans and rice, huh? Beans are the legume, rice is the grain, yeah? Uh, corn and beans would be a complete protein source. So if we're not going to eat meat, we need to make sure we have a complete protein source. Proteins are essential. They're like words, yeah? And the amino acids are like letters. You change the order of amino acids, you get a different word. When I eat a cow, I don't make cow proteins. I don't moo and I'm not black and white. I make human proteins. How are we doing on time, Mr. Trello? 9.40. Oh, uh, we got time just for this, and then we're going to call it quits. I got to go to school. Uh, you'll hear this, probiotics, right? Can you see that on there? Mm -hmm. It's come from fermented foods. 
and our intestines are filled with these microbiomes. You got all these little bacteria inside your intestines that normally should be there in a healthy gut. We've had so many antibiotics, the antibiotics are good, but we've killed off a lot of that bacteria. So you hear a lot about these probiotics. We're trying to return that um, bacteria back into our intestines. Healthy intestines should have all kinds of varieties, lots of biodiversity. Over the years, our intestines are really, really deserts now for that bacteria. I'm Roy Trevelyan. This is BioBites. Thank you.